Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG. I'm one of your hosts, Blake Rasmussen. I'm your other host, Steve Sanu, and we have a special guest. We have four special guests today. Four? four I knew that already. I was four, six, two-thirds, whatever, of the Commander Advisory Group. Ron Foster just happens to live uh, right here in Seattle. Yep. So uh, the Commander Advisory Group, which many of you may not know, is a group that does what, Ron? Well, uh, it was formed uh, a few months ago toward the end of last year. Uh, Sheldon Menry, who many people know as the godfather of Commander, sent out uh, invites to people that uh, he thought could represent various aspects of the Commander community, saying, we want to broaden uh, the voices, we want to get a little more diversity, uh, uh, advising in a more official capacity the Rules Committee to shape the format going forward to figure out what people are really interested in what they're really doing um, and make the format better for everyone was mm -hmm. the idea so uh, he tapped some people from the judge community he tapped some people from the larger magic community some people that represent uh, the competitive commander community uh, some famous uh, names and uh, yeah we've had a, a couple meetings since then and uh, we're working on all sorts of things to try to make the popular format even better. Okay. Well, let's uh, bring on three additional uh, members of the, the CAG. The CAG. <laughs> um, so we have, introduce yourself, guys. I'm not going to say all your names. Uh, we'll start top, go around. Shivam, you start. Uh, hi, I'm Shivam Putt. Um, I'm a co-host of the Commander in Podcast, and um, I'm a CAG member, too. Uh, <laughs> hi, everybody. It's nice to see you guys. Charlotte, who are you? Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm a level three magic judge, also a CAG member, of course. I run the uh, question and answer blog at magicjudge.tumblr.com. And yeah, that's my jam. All right. And Stibbs. Hi, I'm uh, Adam Sporsky, better known as Stibbs, I think now. Uh, I, as a member of the CAG, I get to be, I guess, the old guy. I don't know. I uh, picked up Commander, <laughs> commander as a. Uh, <laughs> As a uh, when we called it something else, you know, almost ten years ago, and uh, I've had the, the the privilege to play in a lot of places against a lot of different people, and really enjoy a lot about the format. Okay, and Ron, you you gave us an introduction to the CAG, but who are you? Oh, um, I've worn many hats uh, over the years. Uh, I was once a level three judge, uh, like Charlotte. Uh, I worked out of Japan for a long time, where I lived uh, for a total of fifteen years. Uh, whether accurately or not, I'm credited with introducing the format to Japan and making it popular with players there. Uh, I worked for Wizards for a period of time, helping out in the uh, organized play department, premier events. Um, so I've been playing Magic since uh, we were opening dual lands and boosters, and I've been playing Commander, much like Stibbs, since it was called something else. I think I first played it at a pro tour in like 2002 or 2003. Oh. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's... Yeah, so. Uh, Charlotte, this, is, uh, this isn't the full committee. Who's, uh, who else are we missing today? Uh, we are currently missing Rachel Agnes and Josh Lee Kwai. Yes, they just they just yeah. had a conflict and, and couldn't make it today. Yeah. Because... They're, they're very busy, very important people, and I'm sure they'd love to be here <laughs> if they could. <laughs> I mean, everybody here is really busy. We're all really, really busy and really important. We made it. Josh and well, Rachel. I'm, I'm important and a little less busy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is the middle of the work week. so Not yeah. for Charlotte, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's like the middle years, of the night but... where you are. Yeah. yeah, yay time zones. Yes. Uh, so what we're actually here to talk about today, is not time zones, uh, we're going to talk about a bunch of uh, hot button or less hot button issues in Commander uh, so that you can get a sense of what the Commander Advisory Group thinks and what they're advising the Rules Committee on. And uh, Feel free to put questions for the group in chat and we'll ask them of the group. Uh, and we'll kind of take their temperature on a number of things. Uh, but why don't we, let's get a sense of what you guys are as players. Tell us about the I first. I thought we were here to talk about the modern metagame, though. Oh, oh God, sorry. That's, sorry. <laughs> That's how I lured oh, you shoot. here. Didn't yeah. you get the memo? Oh, man. Shoot. Oh. 
We got to send out these. <laughs> okay, we got to send out these ones earlier. <laughs> like just, just for that, Chief. Um, why don't you start cool. t telling us? Tell us the first commander deck you ever built. So the first deck I ever built was when I came back to Magic in 2011, uh, right around when Innistrad came back. Tim Willoughby wrote on the Mothership an article about Grimgrin and how to use Grimgrin in Commander. And I was like, what's a Grimgrin? What's a Commander? <laughs> and I looked at it and I'm like, a format where I can play all of my cards from my childhood? Sold. Mm -hmm. And so I built this gigantic monolithic Grimgrin deck. It just spews out zombies by the pound. It's amazing. It's still one of my just favorite, like, mid-ranged, I can play against any level of player deck. You still have that one put together? Oh, yeah. Okay. I upgrade it periodically whenever, like, you know, new Lilianas and new zombies come out. But it's still, it's just the same sleeve, same beaters. Uh, it's basically Tim's shell from, like, 10 Re years ago. sleeve your deck. <laughs> <laughs> Says the judge. You know... I make sure the, the Tron lands are on the side. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Stibbs. Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Stibbs, what was your first deck? Uh, the very first deck I ever put together was Crush the Blood Braided. So it was a Jun six mana commander that you could play and then take like two more turns to set up before you did something with it. You know, back in, back in the day when you could get away with that in the format. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of fun to play like Act of Treason and Threaten Effects and you know, take your big thing and then hit you over the head with it and then make Crush really big and hit you with that too because commander damage was always there. So it was a lot of fun just to kind of go big and, and have fun with that. Okay. Charlotte, what was your first deck? Uh, so I became a judge in 2009. And as I got into judging and met more judges and got exposed to the wider community, I heard about this thing called Elder Dragon Highlander, which was played by a lot of judges. So it's like, oh, I should probably do that if I want, you know, to be able to hang out with judges after events and not just keep borrowing decks. So sometime in 2010, I don't remember the exact date, I decided to put together my first deck, which was Earl the Miststalker, which was just your standard uh, Naya, Enchantress, Voltron, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. load up load up Earl and one-shot people or whatever, you know, fa fairly bog standard. Uh, not a deck I have anymore, sadly. The deck evolved over time, got a little stale. I ended up taking the red out and making it a Krond deck, but, you know, I haven't had it in a few years now, so. All right. Wrong. I think I remember playing against that when I met Charlotte. It, was it uh, Grand Prix Montreal? One of the Montreal? Yeah, I would have had it at Montreal yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, I retired it about four years ago and mm. finally took the remnants apart, like, a few months ago when I was... <laughs> Finally, like, look, I'm not rebuilding this deck ever. So, yeah. Uh, Burrell's a lot of fun. Yeah. Burrell is a lot of fun, but he's a little one note. So. Yes, kind of a one trick pony. Uh, my first deck was a horrible pile of things. The commander was Boris Devilboon. <laughs> uh, Minor demon tokens. What? <laughs> yes. Um, and because. Uh, as Charlotte mentioned, and we've been alluding to the, the format used to be called Elder Dragon Highlander back when it was just a, uh, a community fun sort of thing. And there was a bit of, you know, cred to be had if you used actual Legends cards mm -hmm. from that expansion because that's where the Elder Dragons were originally from. So uh, I thought a token maker in red and black was a little different, looked fun, and I went all on theme. It was filled with Oni so there were all of these demons in it, and then there were token, additional token makers, like, you know, for the thralls and uh, kobolds and, and goblins Cobalt. and uh, <laughs> feeding things to the demons. And, you know, ideally it was a Rakdos deck that punished opponents with direct damage and, and big creatures and flying trampling things, and it all looked good on paper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just never really kind of uh, came together uh, the way I wanted to. But it was a lot of fun to play because it was one of those decks where people would be like, what, what is that? I've never seen this card before. What does this even do? That's Minor been my demon? experience playing Commander against you a lot. <laughs> 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 mm. uh, you guys are all nicer than me. My first deck was a Rubinia deck that had no <laughs> designs on playing its Commander. And this is uh, back when a bunch of the cards in the deck were not banned. So I had the fast, <laughs> the fast Von Crucible Zurin Orb. Classic uh, play. Yep, uh, definitely played Armageddon awesome with that. I had uh, Revelark, uh, Body Double, 
uh, You're a terrible mirror person. entity like, and a yeah. gifts ungiven got all these things. It was basically just banned combos and it was amazing. Uh, and then they banned pieces of the deck bit by bit. You mean bit. banned combos? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's his middle name. Yeah. Blake banned combos. It's what I do. It's it what might be I better do. just cut to the chase and ban Blake. But some players yeah. have tried. I've that. tried. <laughs> I've tried so many times. Well, well, we have four CAG members here. We could take a vote. In, in, fair, <laughs> no, in fairness, quorum. we do. We have quorum. You can advise the rules committee <laughs> to decide to ban. Me. In fairness, we do have a threat assessment chart when we play with Blake. Yep. Blake is at the top, and then everybody else is after Blake. That's all you have to know. Blake <laughs> playing attack Blake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my first deck was, I think, I. I got into the format mostly through pre-constructed stuff, so uh, the first one I actually built from scratch was Selvala Heart of the Wilds, mm. uh, Mono Green Selvala. Mm. I love ramping into big creatures. It is very fun for me, but not always so fun for everybody else, so I don't play that deck so much anymore. Okay. But it was... Uh, yeah, that card's kind of bananas. It's pretty ridiculous. I like to refer to it as Crazy Town Banana Pants. I believe that is <laughs> the technical term. It actually uh, was a really strong deck. I remember yeah. playing against it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Which, which is what got me on the threat assessment list in our playgroup below Blake, <laughs> like right below him. <laughs> so baller. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come back to what decks you're playing now, because I kind of want to know how you guys have evolved. But let's, uh, let's open it up to one of these, uh, these opinion here questions. Uh, favorite cards, new decks, uh, War of the Spark. What is, what is War of the Spark added to your commander experience right now? Uh, Charlotte, let's start with you. Uh, War of the Spark has a lot of really cool new options for Commander as a format without having any cards that are, like, format warping, which is a really hard trick to pull. But just in general, I think uh, specifically, like, a lot of the uncommon Planeswalkers add a lot of just good utility options to a lot of decks, and I've found myself slotting a lot of them into decks in place of other things that, you know, are reasonable. <clears throat> But, like, you know, they're just, some of them just don't, some of them are just very unique effects that are hard to replicate as well. Like, I've had about, what, I, I have uh, the new Kiora in, like, two of my decks. I've put the new Obnixilis in a deck. I have the Wanderer in a deck, you know, and this is just the uncommon one. Like, mm -hmm. they're all really, really good. And then there's just a lot of really, really good other commons and uncommons in the set. Uh... One card that I think is quietly going to be excellent for the format is Firemind Vessel, just as another good colored mana rock. Mm. It's four mana, enters tap, tap for two mana of different colors, which right. is just really good for two color decks that <laughs> want to ramp, but maybe have more specific colored mana requirements. And so it makes it a better choice than something like Grand Dynamo in those decks. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I have that in my Rakdos Showstopper deck, because that deck has a lot of heavy black or black red requirements. And so I could run three and dynamo, but a lot of times I'm limited on black mana, not on total mana. So yeah, so that's what I'm seeing out of the formats, out of the set so far. All right, Stibbs, what have you picked up? Nope. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Stibbs, nope. you're muted. Can't hear, you're muted. Can't hear Stibbs. Oh, no, I'm good now. I'm okay. Good now. We did it. We hear you now. Oh, he was, he was making us out. He was probably just mouthing words to see if we were paying attention. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Okay, go ahead, Stibbs. No, there's two two cards. Uh, the first is Spark Double. Um, I really mm. like clone mm. effects because if you're worried your deck's a little too strong or you're worried your deck's not strong enough, just copy the stuff that somebody else made. Like, you know, if you're playing somebody who likes to do dumb things with Planeswalkers, you know, hey, I, maybe I do that too. Uh, the the other is um, is uh, Casualties of, of War, mm. I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name. Uh, but I always really like the idea of Decimate. You know, it's an old four mana Odyssey, Sorcery, Destroy Four things. This just gets five, and it, you don't need all five of them. So it's it's just one of those cards that just slotted right into my favorite Freaka deck, and I get to get to dunk on a bunch of really annoying things. Sure. All right. Uh, and then, Ron, how about you? Um, uh, I would definitely echo uh, Charlotte. The uh, commanders, especially with the static abilities, really add uh, a lot. Yes, the <laughs> walkers, right? we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not there yet. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but also echoing about the mana uh, thing, I have been. I find myself wanting to put uh, what's it called mana geode in just about mm. every deck because that's a nice little. Uh, it's a mana rock that also lets you scry. It and uh, 
you know, most commander games, at least the ones I play, you're not doing much till turn six or seven anyway, so that's a nice little ramp up effect that also lets you help uh, set up a draw, mm -hmm. uh, which is always good. Um, I'm also really liking the additional answers because it is a planeswalker heavy set, the additional ways to deal with planeswalkers, things like, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the, uh, the, the two mana black spell that Elder, Elder, spell. Elder, Elder spell that kills them, yeah. uh, but there's also the uh, the sorcery that has the picture of Liliana burning on it, where you can remove five counters from yep. anything. Price of betrayal, I yep. believe, is the yeah. I, I'm actually not up on all of the names yet. It's okay. uh, remember what they do That's and the art, part. but yeah. Uh, so things like that the, that help uh, deal with planeswalkers or make your own stronger, which is uh, an area that hasn't really been explored too much yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking that's where we'll see a lot of uh, impact from this set on the format, not to mention just all the people going crazy with um, Super Friends decks with all of their new toys yep. and people like Sheevan with Grim Grin, all the zombie love. <laughs> yeah, Sheevan, yes. what have you added? <laughs> well, for one thing, uh, all of those amass lords are just amazing in a zombie mm -hmm. tokens deck. Because when all of your zombies are uh, menace, flying, lifelink, you know, just demons it's pretty great but the thing for me that has been like the number one seller for this uh this set for me which my podcast has been calling commander masters 2019 <laughs> uh is uh landfall proliferate mm. whatever that elf evolution is evolution say yeah yep that thing is bananas it is stupid i don't know how that got printed it is <laughs> ridiculous like in a deck like mine like my titania deck which has a ton of uh lands coming out you just can spam out like four or five lands and hey i love getting plus five plus five to all of my stuff mm -hmm. you know in this uh Selesnia deck that i built with kathar's crusade and you've got like drop a land everything goes yeah it's all of the proliferate stuff in this set is so so good just putting it on a colorless land with karn's bastion or whatever insane mm -hmm. that card is going to show up in like a million commander decks yeah and uh, what is that? The black green uh, spell that lets you destroy one of everything? That's casualties of war. Casualties yeah. of war. Yeah. That card went straight into my Apatra deck along with New Vraska. It's sick. It yeah. is sick. It's hard to think of a black green deck that doesn't want that card, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. From now until the end of time, that's a stable. <laughs> can I? Can I add one more card, quick? Absolutely not, Stibbs. I, I'm, yeah, gonna, go I'm gonna overrule Blake and say yes. yes. I get my one overrule a week. I'm gonna overrule him on this. <laughs> Uh, so the the uh, when I saw it previewed, I, I definitely called it the stibsiest card ever, Death Sprout. So it's rampant growth and mm, kill a creature yeah. yes. as an instant. It's all I want to do on turn four, turn five, turn six, and commander. It's great. Uh, okay, you so... got to my Hypatra deck. So dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since we broached the topic a little bit, uh, let's take everybody's temperature on. Planeswalkers as commanders. The community has been talking a little bit about this lately, especially with War of the Spark and 36 new ones. Hot topics. Uh, we know how Josh Lee Kwai feels about it because he's like super against it. It was. Uh, it was also on. I think the latest episode of the Command Zone. That was something that he uh, mentioned. Yep. And the yep. command and the Commander versus crew actually just did an episode where they only used Planeswalkers from the new set, mm. uh, which is pretty interesting. But what do you guys all think? Who wants to jump into the pool first? Yeah, I'm just opening okay, this one up. So, okay, so here's the thing, right? When we started talking about Planeswalkers Commanders, that was that weekend where like all the first uh, batch previews for War of the Spark had been coming out, mm. and I was getting messaged from left and right. Everybody's like, oh my God, you got to legalize Planeswalkers. I'm like, first off, we don't get to legalize nothing, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but more importantly, I was like, I'm personally not for it because for me, commanders about having your legendary creatures do the thing. I am the planeswalker ruling the ship, not Jace or whoever is actually the commander of my thing. But I actually gave it a try. I sat, I tried it out. I talked to uh, like hundreds of people on all sorts of different websites, on Reddit, on Twitters. I did the research to actually see is this what the community wants and is this actually a good idea? And the general summation that I took away from this is, as a Vorthos, this is amazing. I would love to have a Kiora-led Seed Monsters deck. I think that would be incredible, or a Dragon-led Tarkin deck, right? But as a player, it's not great to have a repeatable Planeswalker that can come out every turn, ultimate, and leave with like things like Doubling Season or what have you, or with you know Chain Veils and all these other 
strong abilities and these planeswalkers are meant to be like come do your thing and leave because they're stupidly good mm -hmm. right they're incredibly powerful and unbalancing and being able to just cast it every turn bring it out it acts as first off it's a damage absorber it's a sponge that i have to handle that and that means i can't handle you and in doing so you end up with this just big <coughs> beefy like it's like adding another 10 15 life to the player's total and giving them like I don't know. I've I played against a game where somebody had three Teferi emblems. Okay, Gross. three <laughs> Teferi. Emblems. I'm sorry, I had a mini that stroke. Is, How many emblems was it? That is the most disgusting way to play Magic, right? Mm -hmm. And frankly, that's just like you that's not best? what I want. I did best game. West way to play Magic. It's the it's the Blake the way to play Magic. I heard I heard Blake Blake way is what I heard. The Blake way to play <laughs> well, Magic. Yeah. So Shiva, yeah, I'm gonna so... put you down as undecided. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm the one that had the, the slip of the tongue a moment ago, but uh, I, I, I generally agree with uh, Shivam. The, uh, I think because mostly they haven't been play tested as a commander, the repeatability mm -hmm. uh, is of a big concern, which is why some of the uncommon ones for more of the spark might actually be okay, because all they do is tick down, uh, and their effects, while good, are not necessarily... Uh, broken in the format, they're just letting you do something you could otherwise do once or twice, like mm -hmm. kill a creature or... Except for Narset. Except for Narset. Except for Narset. Um, but any commander mm -hmm. that ramps up for an ability, uh, which lets you, you know, have uh, play cards for free or all of your cards have free buyback or mm -hmm. stuff like that, like, the format wasn't um, tested to handle that. Those cards weren't tested in that way, and I think mm -hmm. that disqualifies a lot of the existing ones. I'm only okay with commanders, uh, Planeswalkers as commanders, where it actually says, this may be your commander, because okay. it's been specifically tested for the format. The, the first static ability on a commander, in fact. True. Indeed. In True. fact. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it thoughts. a static ability or a rules text ability? You know, that's it. Uh, um, I'm, I'm against it as well. I haven't done any of the play testing like Shivam did, but I... Uh, just in from a gameplay stance um, and just from a game flow stance, I'm against it because, as she even said, it, it, you're, no, you're having to deal with the Planeswalker and not the player. And also you have this Planeswalker instead of a creature that can attack and block. And so you're just putting less damage out there and requiring more damage to deal with yourself. So it slows the game down a lot. And, I mean, as a judge, I look... I mean, I know Commander isn't a tournament format, but as a judge, I look at things with that sort of slant. And so for similar reasons, like the, we've, the reasons we've banned Sensei's Divining Top in a lot of formats, like Modern and Extended and other formats throughout time, um, you know, that's been almost purely for gameplay length reasons. And having, command, having Planeswalkers as Commanders would add those issues to Commander where games can already take too long. So I think it's just not a good idea in general. Stibbs? That said... Oh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Chivam. <laughs> well, because I was going to say, like, things like Oathbreaker, things like Brawl, where you can play as commanders, mm -hmm. the, reason, yeah. the reason that they work much better is because your life total is so much lower. Mm. Because your base life total is lower, yeah. your Planeswalkers can act as an absorber, but it's also yeah. not going to significantly lengthen the game. Exactly. And I think that there's room for, I mean, there's a possibility, but there's just so little removal and so little ways to handle Planeswalker right now. Like, when you sit down against a Super Friends deck, you know that you're basically done. Like, there's nothing you can do. In a, like, all of my decks are mono fair, and they just end up dying. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sit against four Super Friends decks. That's, that doesn't sound yeah. fun to me. No. Stabs. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to unmute. I. <laughs> You're good. Why would I? Why would I ever forget to do that? <laughs> Who does that? The uh, the thing about Commander, I think one of the big things that it has for a charm is that it points you in a good gameplay direction. You know, we we've seen kind of if you look over the history of Magic, it's no secret that like creatures have gotten better and better over the years, and they become a more important part of you know not just limited but competitive play. And kind of broadly speaking, creatures are better than they were 20 years ago. That's part of the game. I think Commander you know, points you in that direction. If you're choosing a legendary creature and you're thinking about playing a creature, you're going to think about other things to do with that creature. You're going to think maybe attacking the creature is a good idea or activating the creature is a good idea. Doing something creature-based, I think, is a lot more fun. 
uh, you know, for, for magic and, and just games in general. Uh, and, and that's not coming from watching Blake beat me down with three planeswalkers in a commander game once, <laughs> but more, um, you know, we, we know that creatures are a lot of fun and are exciting and there's a lot more of them than planeswalkers. I think commander is successful because it started with creatures. Fair enough. Totally. And can you imagine the buy a box Deseret with affinity for artifacts for your creatures and planeswalkers as your commander? Yeah. How obscene I mean, I is that card? You just went to play yeah. Happy Pulse. I don't Congratulations. know. I, I, so I, I don't want to see that is... Tezzeret in the command zone. I don't want to see Teferi Hero of Dominaria in the command zone. I don't want to see Eric in the command zone. Bant Tamio oh. is more of an issue. So my thing Disgusting. is that unless, unless the commander is green, and I'm looking at you doubling season, there is far less room to abuse commanders. I, every every game that I've ever played where planeswalkers have come out, they get attacked immediately. And you can't be the person who's like leaning on your commander because it's just dead. Everybody fears them. Everybody just kills them. Um, now, certainly there could be some broken ones, but dude, there are some broken commanders as it is. Yeah, but the answer to there are broken commanders is not, hey, let's also add broken planeswalkers. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Like, we should be handling the broken commanders. Like, I'm yeah. looking at you, Atraxa, but, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, not making any fr- I'm not making any friends here. I understand that. <laughs> and to be fair, there are a lot of legitimate reasons that people want to have planeswalkers as commanders. And I think it's a bad idea to discount how important the Vorthos element is, especially mm-hmm. in a format of commander where we are so deeply attached to the theming of our decks, the story that our deck is telling, the characters that we're using. And I think, for instance, having your favorite character, like if I had my Mono Gideon deck, that would be amazing. I would love to do that. But I just don't think that this is the right format for it. But the beauty, right. I think the kind of things you would need to change and the kind of cards you'd need to ban to make commanders for to make planeswalkers acceptable as commanders would probably not be good for commander. But the beauty of the format is, though, being a, a social format, a more casual format, is if you and some of your friends do want to build that planeswalker as commander deck, if you all agree to it, you could. And if everyone is packing them as their commander, then you know what to expect. And you can also prepare for yeah. it by having lots of anti-Planeswalker cards in your deck. Uh, although, as, as I pointed out to uh, Shivam in one of our chats, last time I checked, there are approximately, actually not approximately, there are at least 9,325 ways to deal with a Planeswalker in the game of Magic, because that's how many creatures there are with a power above zero that do not have <laughs> Defender. But... Um, uh, Fair. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you and your playgroup want to have a... Planeswalkers as Commander Knight, go for it. If you can talk to your local game store into you know, like having a table just for that, knock yourselves out. Okay. Have fun with your format the way you want to. So that brings it. So yeah, I, I mean, oh, one, one second, <laughs> then we'll get back to you. That brings up two questions. One um, that we got from chat, so I want to make sure to answer this one. Uh, when you're playing a commander game with folks you're not familiar with, how do you broach the idea of deck and power style with them? It's signed someone who would not uh, like to not bring ninjas to Blake's Turbo Lands fight, which is fair. <laughs> those kind of games aren't. I mean, even when I'm the person with the broken deck, those kind of games aren't fun. When someone's trying to attack me with creatures, and I'm like glacial chasm, go. Um, so, how do you guys broach that concept with people? If you meet them at a GP and they're just at a commander table, how do you broach that topic? Literally, uh, at my local game store specifically, people are really good about having that conversation. Uh, the people that play Commander sort of rotate, so it's never quite the same group in any, in any specific day. There's probably like, you know, two dozen people that come in and out. But people have gotten really good about having the conversation of, okay, how strong is your deck? Uh, are we competitive? Are we, you know, tuned? Are we casual? Are we a meme? What, you know? Mm-hmm. And people generally sort of will divide up. Like the last day I was there playing Commander, there were about a dozen people there. And, you know, we basically split off into two sort of casual to mid power tables and one that was not quite CEDH, but, you know, higher, higher power level EDH. <laughs> and everyone was happy and having a good time and enjoying doing their thing. I mean, at uh, Magic Fest LA, 
when I was there, when Josh was there, when Rachel was there, all of us, we were sitting there and I would be playing Commander. I played dozens of Commander games with strangers that weekend because everybody was like, oh, hey, let's sit down and play and whatever. And the first thing I would do is I would pull out my quiver or something and be like, okay, guys, what kind of game are we playing? Mm -hmm. Uh, How high of a power level? And yes, I understand that there's the argument to be made that people might be either lying or misrepresenting themselves. Fine, that's their play experience if they want to do that. But generally speaking, I'm like, okay, is this going to be a slower, dirtily game? Or are we going for cutthroat combo types of things? And I think one of the things that the commander community needs to do is come up with vocabulary that we all share, that we can all understand when we say, yo, this deck is like combo or like this deck is a seven. What does that mean? So that we can all kind of get an idea. And um, I don't know how easy that is. I think it's probably really hard and people are very bad judges. Like, oh yeah, this deck's a four. It went on turn two. Uh, hmm. <laughs> think about that for a second. But it didn't the win thing on turn is, one. GP, so you know that's so yeah. Four I, mean, out look, of I gave four you a chance to put the saying. island out. So relax. Everybody got eight. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. my yeah. guy's cradle isn't a judge foil, so it's not a ten. Obviously, no, that's right? fair. So, yeah, it's completely. <laughs> but reasonable. I think that uh, I think that the thing is the like we always say things like yeah, you know, amongst your own group, it's okay. Do whatever you want. Play with Planeswalker. Do what you got to do. The rules exist to handle parity between strangers at GPs, right? That's kind of why the commander rules exist. So that if I sit down with a table with somebody from Europe or something and we're playing commander, we have a general idea of at least the baseline of where we're going from. But I think that if you want to narrow it down further, you really just got to sit there and say, all right, folks, um, I've got my, like, you know, soldier tokens deck. It's kind of slow and dirtily. It's not very good. Uh, do you think that would be okay to play at this table or will I get blown out? Mm-hmm. Because I had a game at PAX uh, Kaladesh where I sat down at a table with my Soldier Tokens deck, which is the world's worst deck, against a guy who was playing Leovold, a guy who was playing yeah. uh, Narset Lock with Take All the Turns, and another person who had some other kind of just insane spike deck. And I'm sitting here like, turn seven, I put out two one ones, and they're like, uh, you never draw a card again. That's a yikes yeah. from me, dog. Yep. That feels to me like there was a miscommunication and we're not playing the same game. And my goal is to help people avoid doing that. So now you you mentioned both Narset and Leovold here, and the peanut butter and that jelly is the new Narset, uh, which you guys kind of brought up earlier. Uh, how do you guys feel about new Narset? You mean Narset Parter of Veils. Parter of Veils. Steve's been studying the new cards for the MPL <laughs> Weekly Show. Parter of Cards. Yeah, this on, Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. This Saturday at noon on Twitch.tv. Some Veils were not meant to be parted. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, how do we feel about Narset as a group? I'm not uh, a f- uh, Finish your sentence. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of cards that don't let people play or let people do what they want to do. So... Uh, my hate list consists of things like Iona, uh, Vorinclex, um, things like that. that stacks. That, stacks that, that, shut, that shut down the game for everyone but the person playing those cards. Nars, uh, Leovold's kind of like that. Narset may be straddling that line. Um, there's, there's something to be... I think there's a problem if you're drawing all the cards mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but... Lots of decks have cantrips. Lots of decks uh, have things that will draw them extra cards. Um, and if you're telling people you can't do this thing that your deck wants to do, it's cutting into your fun. Um, you know, you, you kill my creatures, you, 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 you wasteland my Gaia's Cradle. That's all part of the game. I understand that's going to happen. You should, you should strip mine my Gaia's Cradle because I'm probably going to do obscene things with it. That's what it's there for. I can't complain. Mm-hmm. But if you're saying, like, you're never going to draw a card again, like, I'm not having fun anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any pro Narset people besides me? I think she's fine in that she can't be in the command zone, so mm-hmm. she's not immediately accessible. Uh, I mean, then we get to the problem of tutor effects and, you know, decks that can consistently get her out on, you know, turn three, turn four. Um, but I think she is more of a wait and see sort of thing. And I don't think she's necessarily going to be as detrimental to the format as Leovold was. Yeah. Yeah. Leovold from being another direction was a big deal. Yeah. 
from another direction, I hate her from a judging standpoint for judging competitive REL stuff, but that's not the topic today. <laughs> but yes, boo, bad, bad design, making lots of GRVs and ugh. Yeah, I played, anyway, I, I built the Leopold Before we get, but... immediately when Leopold came out. I played it exactly once. I cast it on turn two, and then on turn three, I just cast something like Days Undoing or, or you know, one of the various time twisters. And everybody just went, all right, we're done. And then I, and then I never <laughs> yeah. played the deck again because it was, it, it just, it's not, as Ron said, it's, it's not fun if nobody gets to do anything. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. got to be a little counterplay. As much well, as I, I like combos. Like, to kind of jump on that, Blake, um, you know, there are cards that say nobody can do anything, and, and they're kind of unfun, you know, in, in their own way for a lot of people. But, you know, Narset and Veldikonori and a bunch of other really strong cards in Commander are asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. It says, I get to do this stuff, and you can't. And I think that those effects like card drawing or the ability to play spells that are kind of fundamental to how Magic typically plays those asymmetric effects fundamentally break how the game gets played. So when I get more cards and nobody else gets more cards, it's really hard to kind of play a game of Magic. You suddenly start playing something a little bit different, and that's why I think those cards really stand out. So you're, you're all for uh, the effect if it's symmetrical but not asymmet asymmetrical. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with, like, uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth or whatever. That's mm -hmm. a fine card. Um, you know... <laughs> If that's, we're fair and everyone's if everyone's playing the same game, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why but, Vorinclex is on the top of my hate list because he ramps you, which is okay. There's plenty of effects that can do that, yep. but then he basically says every other player skips a turn. Yeah, because it locks down your mana. So either either of those abilities on the card would be fine. Like if we're all skipping turns, we're all like in you know, Winter Orb land. Okay, great. That's symmetrical, like Stib said. If you're it's different from Ron Foster, Winter Orb is mm -hmm. great. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a wonderful card. But, so um, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, basically, the way it works is that, like, one of my favorite cards of all time is Prophet of Krufix. And that yeah. card was very rightly banned because with Vidalk and Ori, it literally gave the Krufix player one turn for every turn that everybody else had. Yep. And it just happened to be on everybody's turn, right? That card is busted because, like Sib said, it's asymmetric. It lets me play forever. Mm -hmm. And... I think like Leovold and Narset type effects are the same thing. They let me play forever without letting you play. Yeah. And my problem with that is not that the competitive player doesn't exist or that stacks is bad, but it's a philosophy of what mm -hmm. is the point of commander. For me, I'm a dad. I'm a full-time job. I get like one night a week to play Magic. I'm sitting for two, three hours with my friends, sitting down and playing one game of commander. If I have this one precious time to sit and play, and the first thing you do is throw down a bunch of lock pieces and... I've now spent, wasted my three hours. I can't play. I'm not having any fun. I could have been doing literally anything else, but now I'm just stuck here. Yep. That seems like a waste of my time and just bad manners for what I think Commander is, which is the, the point is to hang out with your friends, right? Like, that's what Commander is to me. It's like, hey, let's sit and put out our stacks and pull out your favorite cards from a thousand years ago. Either play super fast or super calm, but do the thing that you want to do. And then let me do the thing I want to do, mm -hmm. and then let's see whose thing wins better. Yeah. Right? If you, the thing you want to do is I don't get to play, then I'm going to just skip to the part where I didn't come so I can use that <laughs> three hours to do something else. Right. Yeah, Prophet of Crewfix was especially annoying, and, and I, I played the heck out of that card. But the I love, Hold on. Yeah. I love how every Shock. single time we're yeah. like, this card is broken, this card is broken, this card was bad. I commanded. played them all. Like, oh, I played I them played all. Them all. <laughs> I played, I played every them into the one. ground. It was fine. Um, well, but Prophet of Krufix's play pattern, pattern was that someone would say, okay, I'm done with my turn, and I'd be like, hold up, I have effects. And that was every turn. And it was great for me and yeah. no one else. My yeah. favorite, my favorite, mo I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butt in here. My, my proudest moment in Commander uh, to date was when I was playing a four-player Commander game that Blake was in, and Blake thought he was so clever by baiting <laughs> out a counter spell that I he knew I had in hand, and the counter spell was render silent, and he didn't get to play the rest of his turn. And, and that's, that was awesome. And that's yeah, not right. getting to do your thing. 
Except if it's Blake, right? It's right. okay and if that's, it's Blake, right? And that's why, right. that's See, why Char- I Charlotte's give Steve clapping. so much crap yeah. on this show. Yeah. That was the inciting incident. <laughs> he was so mad. It was great. I was, oh my God. I was so buddy-buddy with Steve until that moment. <laughs> I didn't, now I, I didn't, just roll my eyes at everything. And I'm just like, render silent. I didn't, I didn't win that game. It was totally worth it. Steve. 100% worth no, no, it. I don't remember who won that game. No. I just <laughs> remember getting rendered <laughs> silent amazing. and being like, because you thought you were so clever by baiting out the counter spell. You were like, okay, I'm going to I just wanted to cast awesome. my spell. It's great. I don't even remember what deck I was playing. <laughs> oh, but counter spells are part of the game, though. I mean, they're a thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you yeah, have to respect them yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's Like, can it's it been happen. absorbed? I mean, okay, yeah, moving on. But no, render yeah. sign. Render yeah, sign. but compare the profit <laughs> to something like uh, Winding Canyons or Alchemist Refuge, right? Yeah. Similar effect, but those are one shots. Mm-hmm. So you have to time it, you have to be waiting. Like you said, uh, Prophet of Crufix and Seedborn Muse, it's like, you take a turn, I take a turn. She takes a turn, I take a turn. He takes a turn, or I take a turn. Oh, and now it's my make... turn again. It's like, ah. Oh. I take a turn, I take a turn. Take a yeah. Turn. Um, oh, God. <laughs> let's, okay. Let's skip forward. Uh, we've we've kind of touched on it here, but uh, what are some of your ban and restricted list wants? Either cards you want off the list or cards you want on the list. Uh, Charlotte, let's start with you. Uh, top of my ban list is Iona, because I don't want people to not be able to play the game. Mm-hmm. I think uh, we uh, we ban Iona and we unban Painter Servant, who died for Iona's sins. Yes, Painter Servant interacts with a lot of stuff, but there's a billion cards in Commander that you can break if you want to, so I don't think banning one enabler when we don't ban other enablers is the right way to go. Also, Painter Servant is a great card, and I love it, and... <laughs> And it's I have a place, uh, and I have a play set of the uh, Kaladesh inventions, and yeah. You know. <laughs> what? Fair enough. Oh, yeah. I'm so jealous. <laughs> you oh, just man. derailed Shivam. Dude, you have no idea. I want to get all the inventions, and I've been, I'm oh, like you're a dozen. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, casual flex. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and then to be we, fair, we have I have them because real. I have played Painter Grindstone in Legacy. Fair so. enough. Fair it's enough. not that I just collected four of them to have them. So, <laughs> so that I can't have one. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Specifically, she just walks up anytime she even yes. about to get one and just goes, nope, exactly. nine. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, what did Shivam offer you? Here's uh, $5 more. <laughs> uh, all right, Shivam, what, what about you? What, about, what are your B&R wants? I was thinking of any basic island. Um, <laughs> there are plenty of lands that make blue mana. We'd be fine. We'd no, be just um, fine. It's okay, then we just play Snow-Covered <laughs> Island. It's yeah, fine. exactly. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I mean, I don't think that there's... I mean, there's cards like Expropriate or whatever that should be on the list, probably. Just cards that make people feel bad, but at the same time, the game's got to end. Sometimes mm-hmm. you just got to yeah. use bust on cards to make the game end. Frankly, I'm more on the Josh Lee Kwai train of don't ban cards and unbanned cards like i would really like to see primeval titan come back mm. like i really really love prime time i know that it's a busted card it's a broken card but so what this is commander you think that prime time is the only busted card ever made mm-hmm. like <laughs> I, I still have scars from fighting prime time in its day <laughs> no yeah, I mean, look, as long as we're not shuffling like Junior Ienaga did at the Worlds, where he sat in pile shuffle after every prime time, I think we're okay. But, um, like, Iona needs to go. Iona prevents people from playing Magic. <clears throat> cards Indeed. that prevent people from playing Magic are, in my opinion, cards that shouldn't be in Commander. But there's a lot of people who like to play things like CEDH or play Stacks or play, like, just really competitive lockdown decks, and I don't want to take that away from them. I just don't want them sitting at the table with me. <laughs> but Fair I don't know. I like big green dumb things, and I want to see my big green dumb guys come back. Reasonable. Uh, chat, if you have any BNR wish lists, go ahead and put them in, and we'll, we'll bring them up. Stibbs, what are you thinking for uh, BNR wish list? Uh, I'm definitely on Team Ban uh, Iona. Also Team Ban Dead Eye Navigator, but that's just yes, a meme at yes. this point. Yeah, uh, but you Iona, have time I think, time if you uh, take away Navigator. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that, that was that was also very good. Probably uh, that sounds like a Blake combo right there. I, yeah. I would yeah, I would definitely that. make that trade. I have one deck that uses Dead Eye Navigator. I would probably put Primeval Titan in eight decks. <laughs> uh, a, a, a card that I think can come back is By Rhythm. 
Mm. There's a there's a creature uh, from a uh, um, cons. cons block that is just biorhythm, and mm -hmm. you can repeat it and recur it and do all sorts of stuff. And I think I've seen it in one game. So I think mm -hmm. um, you know. I, again, I, I I would love to see some big splashy ways to end a game come back, given that yeah. there's no set of cards that makes commander somehow magically perfectly balanced, but cards yeah. that just prevent people from doing things like locking. You know, I, I play a Kefnet deck as as Blake might recall, and I. It's great, but if somebody I own is me for blue, I'm just I literally just sit there and I have nothing yeah. I can do yep. for the rest of the game. That's true. At least with biorhythm, you're you're dead. You're dead or you're yeah. very close to dead and the game's over and then you can play another game yeah. and that's what yeah. everybody wants to do anyway. Similarly with Coalition Relic. I uh, not Coalition Relic, Coalition, Coalition Victory, Victory, right? Victory. Yeah. It's Coalition Victory, everybody's like, Well look, you can just fetch out three like, you know, shock lands and win on turn three or whatever. Yeah, you can if you want to end the game on turn three. But and it's then you also get to play another cool game. To... It's also cool to have a really neat victory condition out of nowhere that takes yeah. a lot of setup to do. I don't know. I just think it's like fun card should be allowed. That, that's why Biorhythm is on the band list, though, because it's a victory condition that can come out of nowhere. The shaman of whatever ways the, the Biorhythm on a stick that Stibbs was talking about is uh, you can see it coming for at least a turn because it has to tap to do what it's going to do. So you can get rid of it. You can make sure you have your own creature. Biorhythm is just... End of the turn, uh, I toxic deluge, and then I untap and I buy. I, you know, I play a, a land of our elves and I play a buy with them and I win. Mm -hmm. Lulz, yeah, uh, that was fun. How, how is, but how is that different from a giant torment of hailfire or a giant exsanguinate or, you know, any other spell that we allow in the Fair. format that ends the game? Fair. I don't see how how this spell is bad when these seventy other spells exist. Of I'm, in favor of sucks, cards. <laughs> I'm in favor of cards that end the game. Those should just be legal. If you're doing something, if you're doing a combo and it ends the game, you win, that's fine. Yeah. If you're doing a combo and it just locks everyone down and it takes another, you know, 40 minutes for the game to end, no, that's not good. Mm -hmm. You know, or it sets everyone back to zero, though, no, that's not good, you that, know? That's why, that's why I'm actually in favor of taking uh, Sway of the Stars off, because there's any number of time twister effects already in the game, the life reset to, uh, effect is not that big of a deal. It's, I can understand World Fire, where it sets everybody to one. Mm -hmm. Seven is still a decent chunk of life that needs to be whittled down, plus there's plenty of life-gaining effects that are just random, like a mana rock that gives you some life, or something, you know, a lucky charm, people cast a green <coughs> spell, you gain a life. There's any number of cards that will reset your life total to its starting value. You know, coming back from seven life, that's not a big deal. Like, I, I don't understand no why Ridge that... Arbiter of No Ridge is underplayed, by the way. Hmm? Arbiter of No Ridge, vastly yeah. underplayed. Uh, I don't understand why Sway of the Stars is still banned. Yeah. Reasonable. I agree and with Ron. I, I want to see, see Sway of Stars come in. Yeah. I'd uh, be fine Along with that. the lines, a lot of people have said Cyclonic Rift ought to be banned. And that's because it's one of the biggest bad feeling cards in the game, right? Like, nobody likes it when you sit there and you have this big, beautiful board and somebody just bounces it back to your hand. But... What I've come to realize is that Rifts is actually really an important part of Commander. It's not that it should be banned. It's just that, like, because if you're doing it right, you Rift and then you win. And then the game is over. But if you're doing it wrong, then you Rift. Everybody's got their whole hands, I mean, their whole table is back in their hand and nothing to do. And then you're dirtling. That's where the bad feelings come from. That, oh, we should ban this card because it sucks. Because I don't get to play anymore. I have, you know, nothing going on. I think if you're using Rift properly to like end a game or get yourself out of a situation and then end the game a few turns later, knock yourself out. Yeah, well, Rift can save games because if you get that player that is about to go into an unbounded combo or lock people out of turns and they're doing something at the end of a turn, Cyclonic Rift can save everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, but sure, but in that situation, boomerang could do the same thing if you're just taking away one piece of a combo or something. But why you don't need to overload thing? cyclone. You can boomerang <laughs> all the things. One of the most divisive right, cards of commander for sure. <laughs> I, and here I'm just sitting here thinking cyclonic rift into Armageddon. Anyway, dude. Okay. <laughs> Two weeks ago, you know what? You know what cyclonic rift is? What? Asymmetrical. True. It is yeah. true. I'm pointing up here like people can see what I'm pointing at. Uh, I have a couple <laughs> questions for viewers. Yeah. The, the return feed is, is up that way. That's why you keep seeing us look I that have way. A, I have a couple questions from chat that I want to make sure we get to. We only have a few minutes left. Um, how would you guys feel? We're going to do this quickly. How would you feel about bringing back Band as Commander? Hmm. Ron. 
<laughs> if there are not digital restrictions that would prohibit it, I think that would be worthwhile and worth exploring because there are some that I think are unfair as a commander but fine in the 99. Okay. Charlotte? Same. Okay. Heave him. Free Ravellos. <laughs> <laughs> Stibbs? Hard no. I think the more complex you make the rules, the whole the already harder it is to get into the game. So Band-Aids like Band as Commander, I think, add complexity when it, it doesn't substantially add to the value. Okay. Um, feelings on Paradox Engine. Stibbs, we'll run it right back the direction we came. Stibbs, Paradox Engine. Either I've been super lucky and I haven't seen it in a game, or it, it actually isn't as strong as it is. Um, I think there's a ton of engine cards, and you know, if you want to start picking them off one at a time, Paradox Engine's probably just as fine as some other ones. I, you know, I think fundamentally it's just a, it's, it's a, it's an asymmetric card. Yep. Chiva. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. It's strong sometimes. It's just kind of nothing some other time. I think if you build a deck around Paradox Engine, it can get really busted. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that, then you should go into the game with that intention and let everybody know that. I mean, as long as everybody's on the same page, fine. All right. Charlie? I'm not that... Yeah. I'm ambivalent on it. Like, if other people want... If, like, the majority of the rest of the CAG wanted... And the RC wanted to ban it, I wouldn't say no. But, I mean, I don't particularly care either way. It's not a card I've played with or against a lot. And the few times I've seen it out, you know, it just fuels combos that end the game usually. So it's not a huge problem. And it's part of, you know, 17 moving pieces that can all be disrupted, so... Yeah. yeah. Shatterstorm is a card. Yeah. Sh <laughs> uh, shrug for me as well, and to Echo Stibbs, uh, I haven't seen it uh, that much. And there's plenty of more ways to deal with artifacts than there are Planeswalkers. True. So, blow it, if, blow it up. If you're not packing artifact uh, hate in your commander deck anyway, you're probably doing something wrong. Or you're playing mono black. Gate to Phyrexia is a thing. <laughs> it... I know. <laughs> the only paradox in somebody playing bingo just got really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only paradox engine deck I have is a zombie, and it's busted there. It's super but cool. zombies and already do so many stupid well, things. And, and look, I'll take I'll take my my lumps for my part in that. The one that you're playing, the paradox engine you're playing, is the copy that I gave you. I oh, put, did I get my foil copy? That is that is what I have you an did. all foil zombie. Yes, deck. It's sweet. Yep. I hold no punches in that one. Very nice. Um, or ever at all. Or ever at all. <laughs> That's not true. I have a mono white commander deck. That's true. You don't play it that often, and I it does have never a play in it. it. I never ever play that deck. Uh, it's a Helia deck. It's fine. Um, do any of your play groups, your your home play groups, or any of the people you regularly play with? Do you guys have any house rules that are not uh, obviously part of the normal commander rules? Uh, we'll go Shivam. You're shaking your head yes. Yeah. Um, I, I play the Sean Main Real Monarchy rule, where in the beginning of the game, we put a monarch token in the middle of the table. The first person to do an attack on an unguarded person gets to be the monarch, and suddenly the monarch is in the game forever. Hmm. Because monarch is one of my favorite mechanics ever. It makes multiplayer super fun, and frankly, I think it should just be part of the game. Hmm. Okay. Charlotte? No, not really. I mean, uh, sometimes we'll, you know, let people mulligan more freely than normal. The, the geese oh, mulligan, as people call it. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's not technically the rules, but it's fine. But yeah. generally, we don't do stuff too weird at my local shop. Yeah, we kind of, our, our play groups around here, we're, our general philosophy is, don't be a jerk about mulliganing and just mulligan until you get a playable hand. Just we want just play. We have yeah. limited time. We want to play real games. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We do yeah. we do partials. We do you know, just just get a playable hand. And don't we'll go until you have a playable set and move on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Stibs. Yeah, the yeah, I've got a great group of friends that I'll bump into at conventions pretty regularly, and we have the same kind of just have a hand and play it mm -hmm. rule. You know, get a get a good hand and play. Um, another rule we'll play is if somebody has to take a mulligan, you know, or really needs to shuffle again, we'll start the game and then they can take, you know, their first and second or their first, second and third turns back to back yeah. to back because typically there isn't that much going on and that way it minimizes that downtime that you're just waiting on a logistic piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean everybody doesn't do that? So now I guess we know, lucky. Now we know uh, yeah. I, You know what? I've I've run into groups or or players where they sensei's divining top. 
on the end step right before their turn. It's like, what? No, just do it. Well, everybody else yeah. is doing I, stuff. I just crack that fetch line. Just, just do crack it now. Fine. Nobody's going to wasteland you. Just, it's just fine. Just do yeah. it. It's fine. Uh, what? It, if you want, if something changes and that changes your decision, then you can change it. Yeah, like, exactly. For your yeah. turn. It's like, a casual format. One, one thing we've been uh, playing uh, around with a lot that uh, is getting positive response at the game shop I go to every Tuesday night is Commander Night there. Uh, we get around, on a good night, there's 30 to 40 people there. It's very active. Um, is um, to help uh, get rid of mulligans, make sure mulligans don't happen, and also uh, give a little bit of boost to multicolor decks, is before you shuffle and draw your hand, you can take a basic land card out of your deck, put it into the command zone. At any time during the game, you may skip one of your draws in your draw step to put that land in your hand. Hmm. So especially the three color, the five color decks really like this because then like, I'm going to put a mountain in there. And you, then you draw your opening hand. You're like, okay, well, I've got two lands, but I know if I have to on turn three or four, I can get that yeah. land. Or like a three color deck, I'm primarily, let's say, black, white, but then I've got some red. Well, I'll put a mountain in there to make sure when it's time to cast that Kalia or whatever my favorite Mardu card is, I can mm -hmm. get that red mana. Yeah, fair enough. That's good. Blake, so far, we any... haven't found anything that busts this. Oh, that's yeah. so far. You got any house rules, Blake? No, the mulligan one is the main one. Yeah. We just we just want people to be able to play, and the easiest way not to be able to play is to be mulliganing to five or four, or yeah. then getting stuck on a land or two, and it's just not fun. Yeah. And that person may not as may as well not have played. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, almost we, we're almost out of time, but I did have one more question that chat's asking, or one more card chat's asking about. Recurring Nightmare. Mm. I would personally love to see this card unbanned, but... Uh, I'll bet you would. As a, as a I huge fan of Green Black, I, I would love a chance to play with Recurring Nightmare, mm -hmm. and I think it's just about as busted to build around as some of the other cards that you can build around. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been banned for a very, very long time. I played with that card when it was in Standard, Yeah. because I've also been around a very, very long time. And <laughs> it... Um, there are so many answers to that card now that did not exist when the card was printed and when exactly. it was banned for Commander. Yeah. I think it would be worth unbanning and seeing just how bad it is. I mean, Scott Larrabee already has 25 ways to recycle creatures in his spirit deck and kill me. Yeah. What's one more? And if it is horrible, yeah. it can be banned again. Yeah. Banned again. Yeah. Put it on Pearl. There's a lot more graveyard hate now, too. Yes. And most decks that I've seen pack some kind of graveyard hate because mm -hmm. you have to. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Let's unban it. Done. Do it. <laughs> Great meeting, everyone. Great Thank meeting. You. All right. <laughs> we did it. Sorry, Josh and Rachel, you've been left out of this one. Um, okay, <laughs> we are out of time, but I want to thank all four of you for uh, showing up uh, virtually or in real life and talking Commander with us. Um, next week, we've got a really cool show. Uh, Modern Horizons previews are starting. Yes, yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. And if you want to know where, you can check a cool handy-dandy list that Blake yeah. posted on DailyMTG.com. Daily We've got a list and link to all of the outlets where um, all the previews are going to be happening and when, so you'll know when that is. Uh, and then next week on the show, we've got El Elena Danner, friend of the show, and Adam Prosak from the Tabletop Group, who worked on Modern Horizons as a set. Yep. They're going to join us to preview some Modern Horizons card uh, cards. Cards, plural. More than one. More than one. More than one. Uh, Elena's going to show off one of the cards that she did the art for, <laughs> that I know the model for very well. Yes. Uh, and then Adam's going to talk about designing and developing this very unique set. So thanks again, you four, for showing up. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Hey, friends, Becca Scott here. And if you're not watching the MPL Weekly Saturday at noon, what are you doing? Just go to twitch.tv magic. It's that easy.